SportsIllustrated.com. Every Monday morning, Ross Dellinger from Sports Illustrated jumps inside with us here on OTB. Good morning, man. How are you? Good. How are y'all? Doing good. Uh, we were debating last segment on LSU and where they are present day. Um, how much improvement have you think, or do you think they've made from last year um, and competing to be a championship program here in year two under Ogeron? Hmm. Um, well, I, you know, I, I, I don't know um, how much improvement there are. We, 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 I, just, I guess when you look at uh, – they've just lost so many players from last year, um, you know, especially offensively, losing whatever, seven, eight starters uh, from last year's team. Um, it, it's tough to really kind of in, – improve when you lose so many people like that. I think defensively uh, in, in certain areas, they've, they've improved, but, but it, I, you know, overall as a program, um, I, I think they've, uh, I kind of written about this a little bit during the Alabama week. I think they have certainly more linemen, you know, than they've, they've had over the last few years. And that's always good. There, there's a little more depth there, but that's, they got to keep creating that, you know, they got to keep stocking up on the linemen and, creating more depth and, and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, it's tough in college football when you um, you lose so many people every year uh, to, keep, to keep at that uh, kind of standard every year, to keep, to keep at that 10, 12 win championship level. It, that's why it's so remarkable that Alabama and Clemson um, and maybe even Ohio State you can lump in have been – so good for so long uh it's just kind of it's remarkable how they've been able to do that ross dellinger joining us every monday morning here from sports illustrated you can check him out on twitter at ross dellinger um fr- from lsu's offensive standpoint ogeron said that he was going to hire the, the the best and the brightest on each side of the ball um how do you expect him to answer the offensive questions today because t-bob and i were talking in the break you know last week he said he was very impressed with his offense he thought his offense was doing good um, he's probably going to get the same questions today. Uh, the future of, of his offense, where do you think it lies? Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. You know, we uh, I remember when he was hired and, and him in the interim talking about, you know, changing the offense, going to, you know, a spread of modern-day offense. And, and they, they've uh, – I mean, they, they are. They're trying to do that. You can see – they're trying to do that. They're, they're trying to get out of the, you know, and they've gotten out of the eye formation stuff, and they're trying to throw the ball around a little more and spread the field a little more. Here's the deal, though, and um, I think I've said this on this show before, but I remember talking to um, Toby Weathersby a couple of years ago. I think it was in 2016, actually. So Orgeron was the interim, and they were trying to, you know, change the offense in the middle of the season, kind of. They were doing more spread and trying to throw the ball a little more with Danny. And I will never forget Toby um, kind of enlightening me uh, about what it takes to go from one offense to another and how much, how difficult it can be, especially on the offensive line, to go from an offensive line that runs the ball and runs block, you know, 70 to 75% of the time, uh, to go a little more on the 50-50. Uh, run and pass and, and how difficult that can be. I remember him. I, I remember the quote because I remember running it at some point him saying, we're run blockers. You know, we've got to learn how to pass block. And, I, you know, and that's, that's program wide at each position, I think, offensively. When you, you do it all, you, you are in an offense for so long, one offense, and you, you try to switch, it just takes time. Um, and it takes certain, I think it takes different kind of players Sometimes, but also it takes players starting in that offense from freshman year and kind of working in. So, you know, I, I think we're still seeing that happening. You know, I think it's it's uh, it's going to be a process, and it's going to be kind of a year's process, plural, um, to to get that done. But really, what you need, and you know, we've talked about it a long time around here. You, you need it. You need a quarterback that. Um, is, is more of that, that spread kind of mold, I feel like. But um, but really, it's at every position. And it, it's just changing the kind of the mindset. And it's tough. It, it's tough to do. 
Yeah, and, and that mindset probably starts at least scheme-wise uh, with the offensive coordinator. And, and we said at the time, Ross, when you made the switch from Canada to Innsminger, that was a very risky move. You're putting your neck out there. If it goes wrong, if you regress offense, it was going to blow up in your face. Like we said, you had to be better. You are obviously not better. You, you have taken a, a, a step back, of kind of a larger step back than I think a lot of people, than I certainly would have expected. Um, and, and, and while everything still rides on this A&M game, like it's kind of crazy to me how much rides on this A&M game. Um, if you had to try to sit here and predict today what happens with that OC spot after the season, where's your head at? You know, I don't. It always has kind of felt to me that you know Steve is uh, Steve Insminger is it's worth the back end of his career, obviously, and it just it always kind of felt like this 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 was just kind of a one or two year deal kind of kind of thing. Um, that that's always kind of had felt. Um, now I don't know how I don't know if it's a one or two year, but it, it did always feel like that. You know, it didn't it didn't feel like kind of a permanent thing. He he kind of felt like a gap coach like a gap offensive coordinator where he'll fill in this uh this gap until there's there's somebody you know bigger and better that it always run likes available um you know and, and when you have such a good offense or excuse me such a good defense uh, such a good defensive coordinator you you would think even with an offense that, that doesn't score 30 plus points a game that and you'd be able to win pretty good, and they are doing that. I mean, they are eight two, but but they're not any kind of prolific, and they don't they don't have very good production. There's no no doubt about that, and uh, so I, I can see why he's going to get some questions, you know, today. So it it did it did, does feel like he was a one or two year deal. I just don't know which one that is. Um, you know, I think it kind of depends on who's out there. I feel like um, isn't everybody out there with LSU's checkbook though, Ross? Yeah, I mean that's true. I mean to an extent, I think that that uh, that's true. I, but I will say this, uh, and I don't I don't want to throw around names because I don't know too much. But yeah. I think there are probably some head coaches that, uh, if you look at their current head coaches, that if you look at their career, um, have spent time with Ed Orgeron in our offensive guys who could be coordinators in. They're head coaches right now, so while they're head coaches, they can't be coordinators. I think that maybe there's a few of those out there, but Ooh, uh, like Lincoln Riley, think. nice. Heard it here first. Lincoln <laughs> Riley going to come be the LSU OC. <laughs> that or the Cleveland yeah, Browns yeah. head coach. <laughs> right, right, right. Not not specifically him, but yeah, you, you know. It, 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 I think it, like but like Jordy said, yeah. I mean, sounds like you're flirting open. with the Lane Train, Ross. Are, are you flirting with the Lane Train there with that statement? Or are you no, looking at some really. other guys? Okay. Not really. Uh, no, but I, but I, but even but the other other there are other people available. You're you're mm-hmm. right. I just think you know Ed. You know Ed's one of those guys. You know man, he needs, he wants somebody comfortable with him that he's comfortable with. And uh, until he's uh, he feels like he's going to be comfortable with somebody nationally that he can bring in, uh, he's he's not going to do it. You know, and, and uh, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's an interesting deal because. When he was hired, yeah, he, he talked a lot about overhauling things and improving on offense. And, you know, we, we see an offense that's uh, very similar to what we've seen in the past. Deli, you deli. Know, just to spread it out a little more, but production-wise, it's yeah. kind, of, kind of similar. It was a lot the same. See you today at noon? It feels worse. Anyways. Uh, you won't see me today. No. Okay. All right. Well, enjoy the week. We'll talk to you next Monday. All right, guys. Later, man. Later, Deli. Ross Dellinger every Monday here on Off the Bench. We'll be back in close.